In today's Illinois Times, you'll be able to find an investigative report about a pretty alarming story uh, we've known some details about, but... Uh, my next guest joining us in studio, Scott Reeder, he is with Illinois Times, an investigative reporter. He was able to peel the onion even further uh, and find even more alarming details. And he joins us now to talk about the article, More Girls Accused Detective Son of Sexual Abuse. And you can find that now at uh, IllinoisTimes.com or uh, with the print edition out. Uh, Scott, thanks for taking time with us here on the WMAY Morning News Feed. It's great to see you. It's great to see you too, Greg. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we, we've worked together in the past and uh, a lot of uh, different uh, types of stories that we've talked about, uh, especially with the State House. But now with the Illinois Times, you've got a, a different focus and you're able to spend a lot of time getting the source material, talking to individuals and uh, making sure that uh, you get the entirety of the story. Tell us what you've got here with the most recent uh, investigation uh, concerning uh, sexual assault against minors. Well, it's one of the most disturbing stories I've done in my 34 years in journalism. I have found myself um, interviewing um, a number of teenage girls uh, and young women um, who have reported being sexually assaulted. Um, yeah, I, you know, I found myself sitting in the living room with their parents and with them and just they just would spill out their whole story to me. It was just, it was really a horrific um, thing to be interviewed, to be reporting on. But we, we found some things that are very disturbing, uh, missing files, uh, evidence disappearing, all kinds of things. But let me, let's start here at the beginning here. Back in July, um, some parents, uh, a 14-year-old girl, were checking on their daughter at 12:30 at night. They just kind of stuck their head in their um, in her bedroom, and they noticed she was gone. And they're like, "What the heck is going on here? I mean, where is she?" And they got uh, they called the police immediately, and they um, got on their phone and used the tracker device to see where their daughter's phone was. And they came out with a specific address. The police immediately responded. They um, they said they thought she'd met this man online. Uh, she had mentioned, you know, communicating with somebody online. The police officer goes to that apartment, knocks on the door. Nobody answers. You now, mind you, it's, you know, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, he knocks again. Nobody answers. Then he, um, but he know, they know where the, the girl's phone is because it, the address is coming up on the um, screen. So it's amazing technology nowadays yes. to be able to do that mm -hmm. type of thing. So, so then uh, he steps outside and he runs the plate of the car parked in front of the uh, apartment. And it comes back to a Zane Marine. And at this point, this is according to um, uh, what I've been told by the department, uh, his sergeant becomes involved. And he goes, oh, that's Detective Oglesby's uh, son. And, you know, why don't we have her take care of this? So, this, now this is according to the 14-year-old girl who I interviewed. Uh, the phone rings back in the bedroom where they're at. And according to the girl, uh, she hears his voice coming across the uh, screen at a very high decibel level. You get that little girl home now. And they waited for the police officer to leave. Uh, then they left, and he drove her back to uh, the uh, to, to the neighborhood where she lives. Now, you know, on surface, that, sound, that seems really disturbing because, you know, there's an alleged sexual assault that took place here, right. and you're— uh, having the alleged perpetrator drive the girl home? I mean, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And as far as police procedure and a lot of other things, it doesn't make much sense to me. Well, and this, again, is a, a story of um, a 22-year-old man now. Yes, uh, who he was 22 at the time. Has uh, back then uh, with a, a minor Girl, 14 years old and this is uh uh the 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 son of a of a detective at the, the springfield police department the sex crimes detective at that and 
So the next morning, the father goes through the girl's phone, and he finds photos of his daughter being fondled. So what does he immediately do? This is, this is according to the parents. They call the police. And they, the front desk officer answers the phone, and he, and he explains what, what has happened. And according to the father, he says, Oh, I'm so sorry. That happened to your daughter, too? And the father said, what do you mean, too? And the officer said, I'll have somebody give you a call right back. Well, at this point, the deputy uh, chief, um, Josh Sunkel, calls them back. Uh, they explain, and according to the parents, uh, and I've run this by Sunkel, and he has not denied it, um, they, he, they said, you know, they wanted to file a complaint uh, about this, and uh, Stunkel um, said, supposedly, "Well, are you sure you really want to do this? I've known his daughter, his fa- his mother, for many years, and she's a really nice person." And according to the father, he said, "Hey, I don't care if she's a nice person. Do you know what her uh, her son did to my daughter?" And the response the parents said was, they were listening on speakerphone, was, well, you got her back. Isn't that what you wanted? And, again, you tried to get a response uh, from that particular police officer. Yes, I did. I and, talked uh, to um, uh, Deputy Chief Stunkel, and I ran those by him. He, there was a couple things in the uh, uh, phone uh, conversation that he disputed. We didn't put those in the uh, paper, but those particular two instant things he did not dispute. We're talking with Scott Reeder. He is an investigative reporter for the Illinois Times. Their latest out now. You can pick it up, free copy, or you can go to IllinoisTimes.com. More girls accused detective son of sexual abuse. Scott, we got to take a quick break, but uh, to get the latest on this, uh, there have actually recently been some charges handed down. So we'll kind of go over some of those charges uh, and unpack some more of this uh, pretty alarming story, especially when it comes to something you hinted at earlier, and that's uh, apparently some documents uh, going missing and yes. uh, some other things that uh, there's still some unanswered questions about there's so. a lot of unanswered questions and nobody's asking what those questions well stay tuned we'll have more of that here on the wmay morning news feed i'm greg bishop let's go ahead and t- all right back with the wmay morning news feed i'm greg bishop 753 now don't forget about that weather we've got the winter storm warning through six tonight with uh, about another inch of snow possible but the blowing snow is definitely going to be a concern on some of those roadways joining us in studio is scott reader investigative reporter for illinois times his latest out now more girls accused detective son of sexual abuse and scott you've talked with um, some of the victims here and their families and uh, we'll talk about the latest charges coming up but just touch on one of the other instances that happened outside of springfield over in taylorville yeah uh interesting story just to connect the two uh after there was an arrest in this Months later, uh, in this um, case uh, involving the Springfield girl, I decided to go to the her uh, go to the court appearance uh, involving him, and just just to, uh, just to see what was happening. And there was a woman sitting in the front row, and she's sobbing. And um, I start talking to her afterwards, and that's how I got on to this as a major story. And it was uh, it was a stepmother of uh, of, of a victim. Uh, or of a purport, of a alleged victim, I should say. I'm being very careful here. So there was. I came across the the name of this um, young girl from Springfield who um, alleged um, that she had been sexually assaulted, and I interviewed her. And here's the story that that she shared with me. She said that she met this guy online. They're chatting back and forth. Uh, and, and she's a minor. She's right? a minor. She is 15 years old at this time. Wow. And he is 22. So she says he came by her house at 1130 at night and um, picked her up. She snuck out of the house where she lives with the parent. They, he says, let's go over to um, Taylorville and um, meet some girls. So they drive over there. And, you know, she doesn't know this guy. I mean, this is a this is a new person in, uh, in her life or, um, and, uh, they drive over there and they pick up these two girls who say they're 15. She says they look like they're about 12. I mean, and 
They're driving around. She says they go to a city park in Taylorville. He pulls out a gun and oh, he starts boy. starts shooting uh, at shadows in the guard. And now this is the morning of July fourth, so shots fired are probably not going to get called in because people are just going to assume this is firecrackers. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, they go back to uh, a street and. Somebody comes around the corner real quick, and he yells at this guy, supposedly. And the guy stops and gets out of his car, and this man uh, uh, says he Zane pointed a gun at him. And he gets back in his car, drives home, and immediately calls the police. And um, they hear the police coming, and the girl tells me Zane throws the gun underneath his, uh, his Ford Mustang. The police officer gets there. What do you think is one of the first things that comes out of his mouth? Don't tell me he recognizes him as uh, this detective's son. No. Okay. First All thing right. out of the son, right. out, out of Zane's mouth, though, Zane Marine's mouth is, my mom's oh. a detective. One of the very first things. Okay, of course. And then throughout this whole encounter, over a half an hour period of time with four officers, he talks continually about his mom. He talks continually about... Wow. Uh, how she's working on a homicide case right now, how she's doing this and that, how he's going to take the police exam and try to get on with the Springfield Police Department, all of this stuff. Yeah. He's very much smoozing with them, talking cop talk. So anyway, the cops um, find, uh, he says, you guys are welcome to search my car, you know, and look for if you think there's a gun in there. And he goes, they, they go and they search his car and they find double the amount of legal amount of uh, marijuana in his car, and it's an unsealed container. And this obvious this guy has been drinking a great deal, and he's there, more importantly, with a 15-year-old and two girls that look much younger. Mm. And they, they're all drinking. And the one of the officers said, hey, you're 22 years old. What are you doing with these children? And go back and forth. So... Anyway, all of these things, they said, okay, we're going to separate you guys. I do not want you around these girls. And he goes, of course, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't want to move the car for some reason, if the girl's correct, because there's a gun underneath it. So he says, I can't drive because I've been drinking so heavily. And he says, you know, he had a pint of um, brandy, multiple shots of schnapps. He was talking about how much he had to drink. And I'm thinking, is this the first traffic stop ever that they somebody yeah. um, wants to tell, convince them that they're, he's drunk? Right. And Well, he plied them with the you-know-who-I-am Yeah, card. exactly. Um, Scott, we've got just a couple of more minutes here, of course. Okay. Uh, Zane is facing multiple charges, but okay. there are some substantial unanswered questions okay. here, including documents that, that you have yet to – track down and even have asked other uh, law enforcement agencies to find, and they can't find those things. Well, yes. But anyway, so they don't charge him with anything. They tell him to stay in his car and just sleep it off. We got a minute and a half. Leave in the morning. He picks her up. Uh, uh, several hours later, he allegedly picks her up at her house. They take her over to her apartment, to his apartment, and uh, she's changing clothes in the bathroom, she says he pops the door open with a butter knife, manhandles her while she's undressed, and sexually assaults her for two hours wow. straight. Wow. Two hours. So while you're investigating this, you, they ultimately do put down three different charges against this individual. Eventually. Um, this is months later. And uh, we've got literally 20 seconds here. Uh, tell us about the documents that have that kind of disappeared. Well, the um, three and a half years ago, Years ago, another girl came forward who was 16 and said she'd been sexually assaulted by this guy, and reported. They were parents immediately reported it to the Rochester police, who brought in the sheriff's department. She was interviewed, and they videotaped the entire interview, and then nothing happens, and they can't figure out what's going on. Turns out, all the investigative notes and the video recording of the forensic interview have disappeared, not only from the Sheriff's Department, but from the Child Advocacy Center. And the prosecutor's office had a disc, and they put it in, and whoever had sent it to them sent them a blank disc. Nothing was on it. So we got three agencies that are supposed to have this uh, evidence, 
and none of them do. You can read more about this at IllinoisTimes.com. Scott Reeder, investigative reporter with his latest More Girls Accused Detective Son of Sexual Abuse. Scott, that's all the time we've got. Appreciate it. This is WMAY Springfield, WMAY FM Taylorville, ABC House, News in Progress. We are known to be home to Islamic ex-